In this video, we're going to learn the basics of motion tracking inside of Blender and how you can add 3D elements to your motion tracked footage. So let's start off. First, we will need to have video footage, which we can track in Blender. So you can download the footage I have filmed down below in the description, or you can go out and take a video footage for yourself. Make sure that when you go film for yourself, that there isn't any motion blur in your videos. So the shutter speed will need to be very high. Okay, once you have your footage, we can go into Blender. We're not going to use the standard Blender workspace. We're going to create a new workspace, the motion tracking workspace. As you can see in here, everything looks different, but I will show you how to use it. First, click on the open folder and select your video footage that you want to track. Once your video footage is inside Blender, make sure that the frame rate of your Blender project is the same frame rate as the video footage. Okay, so let's start tracking our footage. First, press set scene frames and press prefetch. In the video footage that I've shot, there is a lot of movement. So for this, we will change our motion model to location, rotation, and scale. Of course, you can manually add tracking markers to your scene, but for the sake of keeping this tutorial very simple and beginner friendly, we will just press detect features. By doing this, your computer will automatically add a few trackers to your footage for you. Now you can press the track forward button in this header down below and the computer will automatically track these markers in your footage. Eventually, once it's tracked, you can see that a lot of trackers have lost their tracking position. You can see this because they aren't yellow anymore. They are red. So go back to the moment when a lot of tracking markers lose their tracking position and then press detect features again. Select all the markers in your scene by pressing a and then press track forward again. Do this a couple of times until your whole footage is tracked. Once your entire footage has been tracked and you press play, you can see all the tracking markers move. As you can see, most of them move correctly, but a lot of them also don't move correctly. So we will need to filter out the ones that don't move correctly because this will give us a bad track. So to do this, go to the solve tab, go to the clean up and press filter track. In a track threshold, type in something like 10 and this will select only the track markers, which are off by around 10 pixels. We absolutely do not want those. So once you have typed in 10, you can press X to delete them. And as you can see, this graph becomes a lot cleaner. This is exactly what we want. If this graph becomes very clean and smooth, that will mean that we have a good track. So if we would press solve camera motion right now, you would see that we get a solve error of around one pixels. Hi everyone. Sorry for interrupting the video, but I forgot to mention two things here. First, you need to select focal length. And secondly, for the keyframes A and B, write down two frame numbers which show the same objects from different angles because the computer needs to know this information to calculate the parallax in the scene. Okay, back to the video. A solve error of around one pixel isn't extremely bad, but we can do a lot better. So let's clean up our tracks again, but this time by pressing clean tracks. Change the reprojection error to one, and this will select again the bad tracking points. Then press X to delete them once again, and once again press solve camera motion. This will give us a solve error of around a half pixel. This is pretty good, you can get it even better, but for now I will keep it at half a pixel. Okay, so now go to the scene setup and press both buttons set as background and set up tracking scene. Let's also select three tracking markers which are on the floor. And once we have done that, go to the orientation tab and press floor. This will align 
the floor in our scene with the floor in our tracked footage. Now, if we go to the Leo tab and if you go into your camera, you can see that the footage has been tracked in the background. But as you can see, the track isn't perfect just yet. So if you want to dial in your track more, you can go back to your motion tracking workspace. Let's press detect features again, but this time we will change some settings. In the left bottom side of your screen, there will pop up a little window which you can unfold. In here, change the threshold to something like 0 0.05 and the distance to something like 80 or 70. This will add a bunch more tracking markers to your scene than when you would just only press detect features and change no settings. So let's do this a couple of times in different parts of our scene again. And let's track the entire footage once more with a lot more tracking markers. Once you have done that, clean the tracks again. And once that done, solve the camera motion once more. Once your camera solve is finished, also make sure to select three different new vertexes for the floor orientation. Because we now have tracked much more points in the scene, the track should look a lot better. So currently we are finished with motion tracking. Now is the time to add fun 3D elements to your scene. But once you have done that, we're not quite finished. You will need to go to the compositing tab up here to change another few settings. In the compositing tab, you can change how your final render looks. I've talked about this more in a different video. But in this case, because we have motion tracked a video, the video gets automatically put in your final render. In my case, I did not want this and I wanted to render a transparent sequence of PNGs. So if you want to do that too, you will need to delete some nodes and change your compositor to look something like this. Now you can render out your scene again and it should be fine. Also a quick tip, in cycles you can add a plane to your scene and change it to be a shadow catcher. What this basically means is that the plane will only render the shadow of the objects that are above it. This is really good for making your objects look as if they are really inside of the scene. I hope that this video was helpful to you in some way. If you still have any questions, feel free to place them in the comments below. And I wish you the best of luck with motion tracking your videos inside of Blender. Bye.